How you doing? Absolutely fantastic. Where are you at th- these days? Um, the band's based out of Las Vegas. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Is that where you're at today? Um, t- today I'm actually in Ohio. Oh, excellent. Are you on tour, or are you guys just uh, uh, basically uh, uh, putting things together? Um, I'm doing um, some recording, so I'm in Ohio recording, making some new music. That's what it's all about. That's what we live for, man. It's it, it's that creativity. We got to feed that monster. Oh, totally. It's, <laughs> I, there's nothing better. The moment that you go into that studio, does does the creative process begin in the way that you feel that energy, or how does it how does it work its way through you? Um, for me, it's like thinking and just let it flow. Right. When the coolest stuff happens, like when you overthink something, just kind of like I usually trash that kind of stuff. It's like ah, it's not good enough and. Just when you connect with that, I don't know what, if it's like a, some, it's something that's around us and you just kind of connect to that energy, that frequency, and have it come through you. I think that's when the best stuff comes out. Is, is it a trust factor where you've just got to trust it to happen? Um, yeah, I, I kind of. I mean, I guess I, I love, I, I write songs all the time. So it's kind of like I just, I love making music. I don't like, there's nothing I think I love more than just making, writing songs and playing live. It's just, uh, it's just kind of just letting go mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what it's about. Yeah, I totally get that because even while I'm binge watching TV, I've got a tablet right there in front of me because I, I just never know when something's going to hit me. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like um, last night, I, I've been working on the song and I, you know, it's, I'll, I'll fall asleep and I'll wake up with this idea going through my head. And I wake, <laughs> I wake, get, wake up and record it. And like before I called you, I was actually work, you know, where I was working on that idea. So... But yeah, you never know when it's going to happen. Yeah. It could be sleep. It could be like as you're watching TV. You know, it's 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 crazy. Like how ideas just like come through you when they decide to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I love the idea that you've given us two different versions of the song "Breathe," the album version as well as the single version. I grew up listening to singles, and I didn't get into albums until way later on in life. But I love the idea that I have the power of choice here, and you guys started that. Oh hell yeah, dude! That's awesome. Yeah, I mean it's. It's it's a different mix and uh, it has a little more energy and um, you know when we uh, start working with uh, Ron and stuff to release this new record we uh, wanted to put you know we kind of like we're updating some of the mixes could have it kind of have it coincide more not, that's not the word I'm looking for <laughs> coincide congeal more with the other songs that we've done since then because that was one of the first songs we tracked really. Yeah. So that see once again, you know, so many times people get confused that we think that music is you know beginning, middle, and end. Put it away. But I mean, it, it, it came back. It came knocking on your door again. Yeah, it's you know I think the song lets you know when it's done. You <laughs> yeah. know, when you kind of get bored with working on it, or you just ran of ideas for it. That's when the song's done. It's time to put it out, and that's where the song's going to live. You know, and you might maybe years later you might look back like, oh, I wish I would have done that differently. But you know, it's about that moment in time. Well, what's really interesting about this song is the fact that, you know, anybody who's listening to it can see themselves in it, 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 it because it feels like that you're, you're, you're sitting next to us and you're going, hey, by the way, I just I just want to have a conversation with you. And, and then it's got that beat to it and everything like that. That just to me, I, it taps into your mother's heart is the way that I look at it. When you've got a guitar and you've got drums working like that, it's your mother's heart. Oh, yeah, dude, that's cool. Yeah, I'm glad that's I, we totally agree with what you're saying. That's you nailed it. To put it on a live stage, how you, how do you work it out? Because I mean, being in the studio is one thing, but when you've got to take it out there to that live stage, um, you know, I, I, I wish I had like a bigger answer for you, but the, but to be honest with you, it's like when the band has some really great chemistry, and we, and between like us, Stacy and myself, the guitar players, how we divide up the parts, it just comes like really natural. We don't really like discuss it, yeah. You know. We, do it and like well we're, and maybe like when we're like playing through we're like oh maybe try this here and try this there but it's like we just kind of like listen to the song and because we we lay down a bunch of guitars <laughs> um and you know just kind of whatever feels right yeah no I, I i totally get that because in radio if we're having a conversation in between the commercials we we always go save it for the air save it don't 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 blow it here you got to save it for the air and we've got to let it happen naturally yeah, some of the best stuff sometimes happens off the air. You're like, oh, man. And then you try to recreate it when you go on. The- <laughs> <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> so now, do you know when you've got a, a rock anthem-esque kind of vibe, or is it just something that's like, oh, boy, here it comes. I, I'm feeling something big here. 
No, I mean, I don't think you ever really know. I think it's the audience that tells you okay. what they're into. You know, we, we, I think we, we want to put out stuff that we're really proud of that we, you know, like for me, like when, we, when I work, write a song, it's, I want it to live up to those, like my heroes, you know, their records, you know, if I, if I wanted to stand up against a, you know, a back in black by ACDC or, you know, Rolling Stones, some girls or whatever, you know, it's like, if I can get somewhere close to where I think, it would live next to those songs. I think I, I'm going to be happy with it. Yeah, because people's choices and dis, and you know and tastes are so different. Because even with podcasting and stuff like that, you know, the one that you think is going to be the big, big podcast, it, it loses out to the one because you talk to an ant farmer, and all the ant farmers of the world happen to tune in to pick up those numbers. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's fun. Did, did the term um, um, alternative rock, did it take a hit when when groups like Imagine Dragons came in? Because it seemed like radio changed at that time period. It kind of went electronic. Yeah, I mean, radio is a, a funny thing. You know, it's it's always changing and growing and, you know, doing one thing. And, uh, you know, I guess if you look back on it, like like in the early, what, the 90s or in early 90s, like you know, alternative radio is more just kind of, it's, it was rock music, mm -hmm. but done with a different like mindset, you know, than some of the songs and, you know, straight up terrestrial rock. And then, you know, alternative slowly became a little bit more pop oriented. Just, you know, when you know, bands like, uh, you know, Magic Dragons, I, I actually dig those guys. So I, do like, I, yeah. I really dig those first couple records of theirs. And they definitely, you know, they've definitely pushed the, the pop element more. But as like you know, have gotten bigger, so I mean, I don't know. It's like music is weird, and like what I consider alternative, maybe it's not alternative anymore. But uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's. I think it's in a weird place. I think it's gonna, you know, as with all decades of music, it's just gonna change again. You know, I think the style that's happening right now, alternative radio, is probably gonna gear back towards more guitar stuff because I think bands that are starting to come up now and you look at them they're just like more guitar and like real bands or human oriented you know what i'm saying yeah. you know they have that aspect of those electronic things in it but it's probably i, think, I feel like it's you know that's kind of like almost like not run its course but people's ears are kind of getting tired of it a little bit because it's like <laughs> oh i thought i've heard that song i've heard that song before <laughs> how organic does it have to be to come up with that hook of the song is that something that hits you right off the bat or is it so you know, or does a lyric grab you first and you go okay let's let's just build on this i mean for us like usually it starts with the with the music and then we'll kind of vamp on top of it you know whether it's pete singing something or i have an idea i'll throw out at him um it's it's it usually starts with music and we try to it just i don't think there's any rules it doesn't always go a certain way but it usually starts with the music mm -hmm. yeah sometimes pete might start with the verses and or you know and then you know the chorus but the other day we'll work on a song we definitely start with the chorus and the hook oh and wow so i mean and that's gonna be oh, dude, it's gonna be so cool i can't wait to, i mean i'm already excited about the next record i think we have some newer songs that are i'm really excited about but uh um yeah, it's, I don't. Again, I don't think there's any rules. I don't think there's any one certain way to to do it. Is it like Christmas? Do you have to keep it away from from fans and stuff? Where I mean, you can talk about it, but the thing is, is that you don't want the fans to discover it yet. Yeah, well, I think we might start playing a couple, one, a couple of these songs live because they're just that good, you know. Like people come see us live, we'll get a little taste of what the next record might sound like, and it's it's a little bit more in your face and a little bit more uh, lively sounding and. It's, I, I mean, it's going to be cool. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Adult Top 40 Radio is really changing, too. So I totally see some more rock starting to appear on that scene. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially, you know, you got, like, bands like, you know, Greta Van Fleet, who's selling out, like, arenas, you know, and you got the the great rival sons. And, you know, we're, we we kind of fancy ourselves. Like, like some we, we like to fall somewhere between, like, the rival sons meets the cults meets STP. <laughs> That, I think that's what we're, we'd be happy with. We could fall somewhere in there, but you know. Oh my God! You you mentioned Stone Temple Pilots. That right there. That took me back to a great time in music history. I hope that's where we're going. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, it sucks. Is uh, I never got to see Stone Temple Pilots. No. But one of the bands I I was in, we got to we got to do a tour with Scott Weiland right before, like literally two weeks before he passed away. Wow. And it was like, that was my first time ever seeing Scott Wyland other than watching like YouTube and seeing like videos of him with like, you know, Velvet Revolver and STP. And, you know, it was, it was kind of like heartbreaking at the same time. Cause he was actually definitely was, he was Scott Wyland, that legend, but he also 
you know, he, you can tell he was just going, he was fighting some demons, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it was interesting, you know, but the guy, you know, his band was great and he played those, those songs that you love, you know, and it was, it was cool. See, I, I just went through that with, with Christine McVie in the way that I kept saying, Oh, well, I'll, I'll see him one day. I'll see him one day. I blew it. I, I totally blew it. Yeah. I was like, I wish I was older. Cause then I could have saw him. You know, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> Mom took you some cool concerts, but she didn't take those guys. <laughs> now, you were talking about new music and, and testing them out and stuff like that. How do you know where to put it on the set list? Is it a gut reaction? Is it something you put on that list on the side of the floor where you go, okay, this this would be the place. I think they're revved up for it. I, th- I think it's just you know, when you're making a set list, to me anyway, like I just I try to go with vibe. Like what's, I, want, I want to take the listener somewhere, you know, those people. It's almost like, you know, when you – those albums that you know nobody really does on records anymore but the, when the albums like they kind of take you on a journey and we try to do that live too you know we want to p- get the people excited and bring them down a little bit and bring them back up and just keep it interesting for them dude i'm 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 talking with bands that are actually doing their stuff on cassettes again because they feel that the nostalgia is there and that people will buy cassettes yeah it's crazy cassettes are gone up and like i think cds are starting to come back too i oh guess <laughs> That's with the new vinyl. I don't know. It's pretty crazy, man. <laughs> What's it like yeah. to have your music played at an NHL game? Oh, dude, it was it was it's pretty wild, you know. It's like, you know, hockey's a big thing in Vegas, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, this year because our team's not the greatest this year, but you know, our first year it came out, we were kicking some ass. But uh, dude, it, it's cool. But I, you know, I think it's, I don't know, man. It's like I showed the video too, so that was kind of neat. Do you walk up to the DJ or the or the or the the, the program or production director uh, at the game and say, "Dude, thank you so much." I think I tweeted him because I, I couldn't find him because we were stuck in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird? Now you know what it's like for us. <laughs> <laughs> so what website can we can we send people to give you guys lots of love and keep us up to date on on the new music that you're doing because you you really feel the the, the vibe on this next jump yeah you go you're crashing and then you know instagram at crashing wayward youtube at crashing wayward you know anywhere tiktok it's all at crashing wayward you'll find us i love it man you got to come back to this show anytime in the future especially when you start releasing the new music i, I want to talk about it i want to break it down Dude, I would love that. I love talking music, and anytime you want me back, I'll be back in a heartbeat. Let's do it then, man. You be brilliant tonight, all right? All right, man. Thank you so much for having us.